Hello everyone. In this video, we shall discuss the short note answer for muscle relaxants in general anesthesia. Skeletal muscle relaxants are drugs that act peripherally at the neuromuscular junction or muscle fiber itself or centrally in the cerebrospinal axis to reduce muscle tone and or cause paralysis. So basically there are two types, the ones which act peripherally which are also known as neuromuscular blockers. The other group, the centrally acting one acts at the cerebrospinal axis. The neuromuscular blocking agents or the peripherally acting muscle relaxants are used in conjunction with general anesthetics to provide muscle relaxation for surgery. While the centrally acting muscle relaxants are used primarily for painful muscle spasms and spastic neurological diseases. The muscle relaxants are classified according to mode of action as depolarizing or non-competitive muscle relaxants and as non-depolarizing or competitive muscle relaxants. As you all know, acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which is found at the neuromuscular junction. Depolarizing muscle relaxants act as acetylcholine receptor agonists by binding to the ACH receptors of the motor end plate, thus generating an action potential. So that is why it is known as depolarizing or non-competitive muscle relaxant. For example, succinylcholine. The next type, non-depolarizing or competitive muscle relaxant is the one which act as competitive antagonist. They bind to the ACH receptors but they are unable to induce ion channel openings. The examples include b furanium pancuronium which are long acting muscle relaxants. Intermediate acting muscle relaxant is equicurium and nevacurium is a short acting non-depolarizing muscle relaxant. According to the site of action, muscle relaxants are again classified into direct acting and centrally acting. Direct acting skeletal muscle relaxants inhibit muscle contraction by decreasing the calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum in muscle cells. For example, dantrolin. So dantrolin is a direct acting muscle relaxant. Centrally acting muscle relaxants are drugs which reduce the skeletal muscle tone by a selective action in the cerebrospinal axis without altering consciousness. So all centrally acting muscle relaxants do have some amount of sedative property and they overlap with the anti-anxiety drugs. Both the direct acting and centrally acting muscle relaxants have no effect on neuromuscular transition, transmission and on muscle fibers. Let's see the action of muscle relaxants on various systems. Skeletal muscles. Intravenous injection of non-depolarizing blockers rapidly produces muscle weakness followed by classic paralysis. The small Fast response muscles are affected first. It spreads to the hands, feet, arm, legs, neck, face and trunk. Finally, the intercostal muscles, the diaphragm, all these are affected and then the respiration stops. Recovery occurs in the reverse sequence. Diaphragmatic contractions reduce first. Depolarizing blockers typically produce fasciculations lasting for seconds, few seconds before inducing classic paralysis. Classic paralysis of limbs means where the limbs appear hanging and very loose. That is known as classic paralysis. What is the action of muscle relaxant on the autonomic ganglia? There is inhibition of autonomic activity by interfering with the neurotransmission within autonomic ganglia. This reduces sympathetic outflow to the heart, thereby decreasing cardiac output by decreasing heart rate and heart contractility. Regarding histamine release, the drug D 
the evocurarin releases histamine from mast cells, thus resulting in hypotension, flushing, bronchospasm, and increased respiratory secretions. On CVS, the evocurarin produces significant fall in the blood pressure. This is due to ganglionic blockade, histamine release, and reduced venous return. This is a result of paralysis of limb and respiratory muscles. On gastrointestinal tract, the ganglionic blocking activity of competitive blockers may enhance the post-operative paralytic ileus after abdominal operations. So this action of muscle relaxant is very useful because it enhances the post-operative paralysis of ileus. So the ileus don't move or the motion will be reduced which is very useful after abdominal operations. On the CMS, all the neuromuscular blockers are quaternary compounds which means they don't cross the blood brain barrier and hence no side effects. Let's see what are the different uses of a muscle relaxant. The most important use of neuromuscular blockers is as adjuvants to general anesthesia. Adequate muscle relaxation can be achieved at lighter planes. They are specially valuable in abdominal and thoracic surgery. In dentistry, they may be required for treating mandibular fractures or maxillofacial fractures. Succinyl choline is employed for brief procedures, for example, endocrichial intubation or laryngoscopy or reduction of fractures and to treat laryngospasm. Succinyl choline is a brief acting muscle relaxant. Convulsions and trauma from electroconvulsive therapy can be avoided by the use of relaxants. Severe cases of tetanus and status epilepticus. All these conditions may be paralyzed by a neuromuscular block. So these are the different uses of a muscle relaxant. Complications of muscle relaxants due to toxicity or overdose include respiratory paralysis and prolonged apnea which is the most important complication. Flushing can occasionally occur with agents like aquacurium and mevacurium. Fall in blood pressure and cardiovascular collapse can occur especially in hypovolemic patients. Cardiac arrhythmias and even cardiac arrest can occur especially with succinyl choline. Precipitation of asthma with histamine releasing neuromuscular blockers is also common. Post-operative muscle soreness can appear after administration of succinyl choline. So that's all about muscle relaxants in general anesthesia. Thanks for watching.